Okay, well, good. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I hate to interrupt a man that's pouring a beer, but what are you going to do? On behalf of the Snacky players, I want to give you a very, very warm welcome and a heartfelt thank you for being here on our 37th year of performing. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Only Wheel of Fortune has been on longer than we have. And I think they use Botox because we don't do that here. So um, how about William Shakespeare coming to Calamity Creek? It's pretty cool. But I bet you didn't realize that last Wednesday, William Shakespeare was at the Cottage Hotel over here in the corner. And I happened to find out that he was there, and I went over and I introduced myself to him. And he said, well, Richard, it's so nice to meet you. And I said, likewise, William, likewise. I said, are you a man that would mind tipping a little pint? And he said, oh, I've been known to indulge. So we had a pint. And we sat there and we talked. Very nice. And he's a wizard of words, this man, you know. And we had another pint. Then we had something to eat. And I said, how about a little aperitif? And he said, no. He said, I'll tell you, I, th those two pints kind of went to my head, and I think I'd better get to bed. I said, where are you staying? He said, right here up on the second floor. I said, oh, good. Well, fine. All right, I'll be on my way. You take care of yourself. So we're in the lobby. He's walking up the stairs. And he said, Dick, Dick. And I said, what do you need, Billy? And he said, how about that, right? <laughs> he said, uh, I can't remember what room I'm in. And I said, you're on the second floor. And he said, yeah, but what room? And I said, well, it's either to be or not to be. And that's how that phrase, <laughs> thank you, Why, thank you, thank you. And that's how that phrase got started. <laughs> I'm looking at the newspaper this morning and yesterday. I'm watching the news. I am so flame and sick and tired of the politicians and the way they're running our state, the way they're running the country, and it just blows my mind. So I got in my car. My wife said, where are you going? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of this nonsense. I drove downtown, parked my car, walking down Monroe Avenue. A lot of curio stores there, mom and pop places, antique stores, you know, um, secondhand stuff. So I happened to walk into this one, <clears throat> and the man said, can I show you something? And I said, no, not really. I'm just here being nosy, looking around. So I'm wandering around, and I see this curio cabinet with glass all around it. And here is this bronze rat. And I said, whoa. I walk up to it, and I'm looking through the glass. He said, can I show that to you? And I said, I'm no appreciator of rats, but this thing is intriguing. So he handed it to me, and I'm looking at it. I said, it got made of the eyes, the ears, uh, the, the claws, the toes, the tail. I mean, you know, crazy looking. I said, wow, is this bronze? He said, yeah, it's bronze. I said, how much is it? He said, 12 bucks. I said, oh, I'll buy it for $12. He said, if you want to buy the book, it's 100 And I said, no, I'm not interested in a book. He said, it's all about the history of the rat. And I said, nah, I just want to take this home. Okay. Want me to wrap it? No, I'll carry it in my hand. Thank you so much. I paid him, paid him the twelve bucks. Walked out the door. I walk about three or three blocks. I'm looking around. I hear this noise boop, 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 behind me. I must have two dozen rats following me down the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and I walked a couple more blocks, and I'm turning around, and they're coming out from some of the dilapidated houses. They're coming out from the garage. They're coming out from the porches. They're coming out from whatever. And by the time I got to South Avenue, there had to be 200 rats behind me. I'm getting a little shaky, needless to say. I get to the Court Street Bridge. I turn around, and there is loads of them follow me down the sidewalk. I get by the bridge, and the water's pouring over the falls. I take the rat, and I throw it out there, and all the rats follow it. Jump over the rail, and go in the river and drown. Holy cats. I walk back to the store, and the guy says, Nah, you want to buy the book now, do you? And I said, No. No, I'm going to Albany tomorrow, and I want to know if you've got a bronze politician I can take with me. <laughs> yes, and that's true. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Once again, I welcome you. Um, nothing is going to happen tonight, but it, it, just in case you've got to leave quick, the entrance is now an exit, so go that way. Follow Dave Chandler and me, because we'll be the first two out of here, I can assure you. <laughs> the restrooms are on the other side of the bar. Our most important man back there is Tending Bar. That's a, that's a wonderful, convenient place for the restrooms. I'm going to ask you to turn off your cell phones, and I'm going to ask you to boo and hiss. Can we do that now? Boo. 
You're wonderful, wonderful. And if anybody out there is interested in joining this wonderful group of people, the snacky players, either on stage, behind stage, serving lights, sound, or whatever, we need new blood. We would love to have people at tryouts. So please let a member of the cast or the crew know that you're interested, and we'll make sure you get on the mailing list for next year. I thank you once again. God bless you. God bless our country. And have fun now because it is showtime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you, thank you, good citizens of Calamity Creek. I salute you. Mama, ain't he handsome? He sure ain't ugly. What's all this razzle-dazzle in the middle of the day? It's just don't seem civilized. Sir, I can tell you're a gentleman of discernment and culture. And? Fortune has smiled upon you. It has? Allow me to introduce myself. Who you be, mister? No any card tricks? Hardly, little lady. I'm a magician, all right, but not with pipe choice words, but rather with words. I am the one, the only. Noble Heart! Noble Heart, producer, actor, leading man, impresario, etc., etc., and so forth. And this, my good people of Calamity Creek, is my little strolling Shakespearean show troupe, each and every one a jewel in the diadem of the dramatic arts. Please be generous with your applause. I implore you. Did 
slip of the tongue correction. Uh, permit me to introduce our outstanding character actress, Miss Lotta Crab Apple. Sure doesn't 
think so. Did you got trouble getting Shufa? I don't tell, dare tell her that I write plays. I have to keep my notebook locked up. If she knew what I was doing, why, she'd explode like a Chinese firecracker. I can't play myself except for two things. What things? Oh, well, I can't read and I can't write. That's what little red schoolhouses are for, Raspy. I sure hope Aunt Abigail isn't going to make trouble. Well, some folks are just natural born troublemakers. I know a natural born troublemaker once back in Texas. Mighty hung out the umbrella. Looked like motherless cats. Bowser's mother was a bull cat and a poverty social. But my oh my, could he stir up trouble. I remember one time back in Laredo, he told folks that the railroad was buying up land at a penny and an acre. Weren't true. That's a lie. But don't turn around. Hands up. They don't think I'm looking at you for being foolish there, partner. Now, don't you feel stupid talking to yourself? Wait a minute. I know that voice. Johnny! Johnny Lasso! Yeah. <laughs> trust you since we ran together in the Rangers until the road went two directions. You to the law and me to prospecting. You circa rich yet? Oh, talk about something else. I get depressed easy. Alright. I'm on the trail of a character named Gentleman Dan. A crook? He sure ain't no gentleman. Crook doesn't do him justice. Home robbery, bank robbery, train robbery. And when it comes to window smashing, he's got all the other people. Sounds like a mighty tricky customer. That he is. Rumor has it he's running with a show troop. Show troop? Now that's what I call a coincidence. <laughs> we got us a show troop just coming to town today. Can you please run that French feller? French feller? Ah, uh, he's shaky, Pierre. <laughs> that show troop is why I'm here, Raspy. Gentleman Dan's about somewhere, and now I'm going to get him. What's he look like? I get lots of descriptions. None of the descriptions match. Gentleman Dan is a master of many faces. Like an actor! You got it, Raspy. Watch yourself. Maybe if I was that really, we can talk about old times. The blind's trail was mighty dusty. You seen them shaky Pierre actors on stage, Johnny? I have. Any good? One is. Mighty pretty gal named a sunny day. <laughs> the name fits her. When she's around, every day is sunny. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, Johnny Lasso, I suspect you was lovesick. Texas Ranger in Arizona ain't got time for love. Love and law don't mix. Remember what I told you, Raspy. I don't want folks in Calamity Creek to know who I am. You can count on me, Johnny. This way to the South Rhythm. Walk this way. No, no, this way. But, but 
she's an artiste. Oh, which only means that she paints her face. She's a fraud like all actors. Mayor, did you see who's back? I imagine that they've run up quite a bill. Howdy, Mayor! I staked on the near $300 worth. Sold them uh, picks, shovels, grub, even a mortal. And we struck it rich! You what? did? Is it possible? Oh, oh, oh. Our sex is busting with nuggets. Oh. We left them at the bank, Baker, but I reckon they'll be safe, won't they? Oh, safe, safe, and the bank's safe. Why, they will be as safe as a mother in its baby's arms. And that's exactly the way that line is written. <laughs> But in the morning, the Overland stage is going to come and take everything off to the assay office in Phoenix. Sky's the limit. I don't gold when I see it. Took us a heap of digging and a heap of years, but me and me will train here. We finally hit it big. Well, in that case, I imagine you can pay Mayor Gibson what you owe. And it'll be our pleasure. With interest, too. Why would you reconsider about them entertainers, Miss Pettigrew? Calamity Creek could use a little entertainment. Oh, if folks in Calamity Creek want entertainment, why let them play checkers? Well, it's Shakespeare. It's not just entertainment. It's, uh, it's culture. Those actors are bringing some culture to Calamity Creek. Will you stop talking about them? You are giving me a headache. Banker Boyle, who is the biggest stockholder in the bank of Calamity Creek? Why, you are, Miss Pettigrew. You're the richest woman in town. Everybody knows that. Why, people ought to call you Queenie Mike. And Banker Boyle, who owns the mortgage on that general store? What general store would that be? Oh, that one. And Banker Boyle, who pays more taxes than anyone else? You do. Mayor Gibson, I think that you get my drift. Reckon I do, Miss Pettigrew. Guess I won't be needing this entertainment license. Positively not. Everybody. We want to spread the news. We struck it rich. Silver, maybe. No, no, Chief Thomas, gold. We found gold. That say office will confirm it. You know, this could be the start of something big. Why, we could have us a full scale gold rush. Oh, yeah. wow. No more petty diggings here and there. I declare, Abigail, you'll be richer than ever. And you already own every building in town almost. We can all celebrate tonight when the actors put on their show. Yeah. It will make a great story for the Sentinel, Disney. Art Gold's Gold Strike, Part Theater Review. Oh, I wouldn't get your hopes up for that theater review, Cornelius. Well, it is news. Well, if it's a story you want, how's this for a headline? No curtain call in Calamity Creek. No curtain call in Calamity Creek? That's right. You mean there ain't going to be a show? That's right. As the leading citizen of Calamity Creek, I feel it is my civic duty to keep out the riffraff. They're not riffraff, Auntie. Why, they're the actors. It's the same thing. My, my, Abigail. What have you got against actors? Well, since you asked...
We never came down. I like to play it safe. I wish you could play your guitar. Look, you sound like a pool cat drowning in hot sauce. What's that? What's it look like? Wind for a fire. Amazing, it's wood for a fire. He ain't as dumb as he looks. <laughs> what do we need a fire for? It ain't cold. Well, we gotta eat, don't we? Well, now that you mention it, I am hungry. The tail of my shirt's a nibbling at my backside. Why don't you shut up? Quit complaining. Yeah, I'm getting pretty tired of you telling me to shut up and quit my complaining. So one of these days... One of these days what? Yeah, 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 yeah. One of these days I'm going to shut up and quit my complaining. Fine, fine. You 
You see this? Yeah. It's a bribe. <laughs> so you sure you can get everyone in town to the show? No problem. We've got cheer for Pat and Alley Blitz, and everybody in Calamity Creek is clamoring for a taste of Shakespeare. A taste? Not a cannibal's <laughs> Don't worry, I ain't gonna say a word about that chicken. <laughs> when you hit the bank, make sure you're not seen. I ain't never fell before, have I? So far, so good. Well, I have a question for you, noble. You too, Duchess. What? Well, I've seen you two perform. I reckon you're not as bad as bad actors, though. So why did you turn to a life of crime? Me, uh, me, Pickles Pass, and Swin oh, Swindler, well, that's Pickles Pass, would like to know.
Brazil. What? Galiente! Anyway. <laughs> See for yourself. Here she comes now. Tremendous 
a wonderful, outstanding, great idea! Mademoiselle and her troupe may ride with us until she's back on her feet again. Just imagine it, Shakespeare with singing and dancing. It would be a sensation! Oh, it sounds vulgar. It'll sell tickets! Ah, yes, citizens of Calamity Creek. Attention, please. For the first time ever on any stage, me, uh, Noble Heart of Noble Heart Shakespearean Show Troupe presents Shakespeare with Mademoiselle Galetti and her troupe performing at intermission. During the intermission? That's right. Two shows for the price of one. Sounds fair. Oh, oh. One show in Calamity Creek is bad enough, but two? Please don't make trouble, Aunt Abigail. Have you obtained your license, Mr. Hart? A mere technicality, right, Mayor? Well, uh, I'm afraid you ain't getting your license, Mr. Hart. No license? What? That's right. No building in Calamity Creek will house your performance. I own every building in the town. <laughs> I have an idea. I have an idea that we can perform on
of mine a, a box of nitroglycerin and a bottle of cough drops. That doesn't make sense, does it? Most of them. Well, what flavor do you want the cough drops? Oh, anything about licorice. I can't stand the taste of licorice. It dulls my teeth. It makes me, uh-oh, burp. A uh, guy named Pistachio? Pistachio? Well, uh, how about juniper berry? Oh, they'll do anything but licorice. So, you doing some prospecting? Yeah, yeah. I reckon you heard about the big gold strike we had outside town. Oh, I heard. You know, today's a big day for Clandy Creek. Having us a Shakespeare show later on. You plan to catch it? <coughs> I get, I got a sore throat. I don't want to catch anything else. I'm so, it's like your sides. I'll be heading for the hills. I ain't seen you in Clamity Creek before, have I? Are you interested in doing business or ain't you? That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Now, I have a lot of different kinds of dynamite stock. What kind are you looking for? Uh, something that works, but not too powerful. Oh, like something that might uh, pull the door off a safe. Something like that? Yes! <laughs> well, uh, let me show you what I have in stock. I keep it in back. Don't keep any dynamite up front, because it, uh, Tends to make the ladies a little bit nervous. Now we're talking business. Which way out, Johnny? Anything about Johnny Dan? Put a clamp on it, Raspy. Somebody might hear you. Right. I think you're walking with that Sunny D out. You make a mighty handsome couple, Johnny. Just tell me what you found out about this noble heart dude. Not much. He just come into town today. You think he's Johnny Dan? It's his show, Troop. Wherever that troop goes, there's a robbery. Who the thunk it? If you can't trust an actor, who can you trust? You gents want tickets for tonight's show? You better get them fast. We're selling out. <laughs> you in the show troop? Yes, sir. I'm an actress. I'm learning the business. I get to do all the dirty work. Actually, I'm an actress. Where will be when Mr. Hart lets me perform? It's Mr. Hart. He pays you well. Well, I'm supposed to get a dollar a week. So far, I've seen two dimes. Talk about cheap. Well, I can't stand here and jabber. I have work to do. Something's gonna happen tonight, Raspy. I feel it in my bones. Oh, 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 hold up, partner. Almost forgot your juniper berry cock. Oh, and the nitroglycerin. So I did. Oblige. some nitroglycerin, too. Said he's going prospecting up in the hills. I doubt it. Have I seen you around Calamity Creek before? They're just passing through. Pretty soon someone will come to Calamity Creek to stay. <laughs> he asked a lot of questions for someone who's just passing through, partner. So, didn't you recognize him, man? Can't say that I did. Terrible Timmy from Texas. Terrible Timmy from Texas! The terrible Jimmy from Texas used to pound around with them numbskulls, Twindler and Pecos Pats. That terrible Jimmy from Texas? The same. What do you suppose he's doing in Calamity Creek? Up to no good, you can count on it. Follow him, Raspy. Don't let him out of your sight. It's just like I'm back with the Texas Rangers. I'll follow him, Johnny. I'll follow him just like a circling hawk. I'll take the shortcut. You best watch yourself while you're at it. I'm going to have a word with the mayor. Rehearsal, rehearsal! We've never performed in the street before. Ooh, la la! Ooh, la la! I'll have a part, won't I, Mr. Hart? You, you're not ready. But I want a chance. You promised me a chance. You better let her know, Noble. We don't want to lose our only apprentice. Cheerful can be... Why, she can be the crowd in the mob scene. The whole crowd. Excellent idea, Billy. Does this mean I won't have any lines? Oh, yes, it does. No lies. Don't be greedy, cheerful. You'll be mute. Mute? Yes, that way you couldn't hide the fact that your acting is terrible. How can my acting be terrible when I've never had a 
chance. You're always looking for an argument. I am not. Can't we get on with rehearsal? Exercise, ladies. Let loose think beautiful thoughts. Oh, let's warm up the vocal cords, shall we? Posture! Posture! Speak the speech, I pray you, as I taught it to you, trippingly on the Hand tongue. Hand me my robe, give me my crown, for I have a mortal longing to... Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch it. Woo!
material. Every hassle out here is just impossible, no, no. Let us retire to the calamity Creek Cottage Hotel in the house of a barn now. No, I'm good with that. Come along, Mademoiselle Villetti. We Is show over. No, Chief Thomas, the show has to even begun. They need to rehearse. Let's watch them some more. Why not? Why not me? It isn't every day we have such curious Dutchy baby, we're not sleepwalkers, we're actors. I'm not worried about that the show, I'm worried about that Texas Ranger. We gotta find out what he knows. You think he's on the gentleman's oh, Quiet! I'm going to the veranda. I expect you there soon, Duchess. Ah oh, yes, I shan't be long. <laughs>
needs death and this rude assault. Villain! Thine own hand yields thy death's instrument. The hand shall burn and never quenching flame hath the king's blood stained the king's own land. Blood? Make her stop, Linda. She's scaring me. She has a bad temper. And that's because she's a
soon as those of this gold strike gets out, we're going to have us a stampede here at the Calamity Creek? Well, law and order must be maintained. We haven't had a problem so far. We have never had a gold strike before. You know, I'm afraid that Mayor Gibson is going to resign as sheriff. He didn't want that job in the first place. Hi, Miss Pettigrew. Thank our boy, oh, thank our boy. Hi, Mr. Boyle. You know, these kids, there's just no respect at all. The young people today, they have no respect for their elders. Oh, Flender, there you are. Now, you haven't been talking to those doctors, have you? They're, they're not nearly the demons that you think they are, Aunt Abigail. Well, do you see what I mean, Baker Boyle? Young people today only know how to contradict. Well, you, you, if you ladies will excuse me, uh, Flanda, Miss Pettigrew, uh, I've got a lot of things I've got to be doing. we got to get more buildings. We're going to need more roads. we got more people coming into town. Busy, busy, busy. All right, Flanda, now you tell me the truth. You have been talking to those actors, haven't you? Well, uh, I thought so. <laughs> Has anyone mentioned my name? Y your name? Why would anyone mention your name, Aunt Abigail? Oh, I was just wondering. I know you're not going to like this, but I've spoken to that aspiring playwright, and he's very nice. Oh, I don't care if he's the booba calamity creep. I don't like him. So you're sure that no one mentioned my name at all? If they did, I, I didn't hear them. My niece is not everyone else. Now, Flender, you come along with me. You can help me put up the new curtains. We you miss the rehearsal? Can't I stay and watch them rehearse, Aunt Abigail? Stuff and nonsense. Now you come along with me. I don't care about bringing up all this acting. Ah, Miss Day, isn't it? It is. Well, in that case, good day, Miss Day. <laughs> Sounds like a little joke, doesn't it? It's the curtain. 
Don't you shut up and quit always complaining. Uh, uh, we don't want to attract attention. We don't want to be seen. Easy does it. Ears and eyes open. Mouths.
I thank you. The Duchess thanks you. Lotta Crabapple thanks you. Billy Barry thanks you. Um, Sunny Day thanks you. Mademoiselle Galati thanks you. Uh, cut out the windstorm and get on with the Shakespeare glamour. That's what we're paying for. As you wish, as prologue, Miss Lotta Crabtree. We'll entertain you with a selection from the boob. Bye. Oh, whatever. Lotta, if you will. As it fell upon a day, the maid he must have made, sitting in the pleasant shade with a grove of myrtles made, beastily in words did sing, trees did grow and plants did spring. Oh, I say chop suey. When are we going to see Mademoiselle Bloody and a young lady dance? Happen at the bank. Is it a robbery? Whatever it is, it's coming this way. Better get my shooting iron. And here they come now. Yeah. <laughs> 
signal to my warriors she not go far. I'm here, Chief. Ah, that's my best warrior. Deputy, deputy. Deputy, deputy. deputy. It's not every day a man's last name is the same as his occupation. <laughs> Little Louisa went that way. I'm on the way, Chief. And when I find her, she'll be answering to a higher power for all that she's done. I thought she was a little girl. Oh, if little Louisa had kept her mouth shut, you wouldn't even know who Gentleman Dan was. I knew. Gentleman Dan could be noble hardy. He doesn't have the smarts to be a master criminal. Well, I resent that. I knew little Louisa, or actually Gentleman Dan, would soon show his hand. Little Louisa, being an actor, could handle for noble to steal her thunder. Oh, vanity, vanity. All is vanity. Vanity will put little Louisa behind bars. What a great story for the Central. Are we entitled to a refund? Noble hearts, Duchess, you outlaws, you are all under arrest. Raspy, put him in the stockroom of the store. That's a good strong lock on there, door. You heard it, Mayor! Move! Oh, oh, I should have ripped open that safe with my bare hands! Oh, shut up! To the this is all going to be misunderstood! Oh. Miss Pine Tree. 